Hi there, welcome to story time. Uh, this is the group of uh, 12 and older uh, story time that is reading The Day My Butt Went Psycho based on a true story. Uh, so this is a fun, fun, fun book to read. I really enjoy this one. It just makes me laugh all the way through. So as I'm reading, I may be giggling all the time while I'm reading. So uh, yesterday we were, when we read um, in chapter one, we found out that Zach's butt had um, jumped off of his body and was now the leader of all of these, uh, like this large group of butts and they want to take over the world and so in the very end of the chapter uh the butts had uh taken the butt catcher who came to try to collect a butt and take it in to put it in jail um had the the butt guards of zach's butt as a matter of fact um had rearranged mm, the butt catcher's butt on his head on above his neck and taken his head and put it where his butt should be which is what they want to happen in the world that's why they want to take over the world because they want the butts to be above the neck they think that that's their rightful place um, above the neck so um, the butt catcher couldn't help at, at all because he was like disoriented from having his body rearranged but he told Zach that he needed to go find the butt hunter um, and Zach knew who that was because they had had trading cards of all of the different uh, people who would go out and find butts and so he had had a butt hunter card so he knew who this amazing person was so that's what we're going to find out in chapter two he's going to try to find the butt hunter. So Zach is going off to try to do that. This one, chapter two, is called The Butt Hunter's Daughter. Zach couldn't see a single butt anywhere as he left the stadium, but he could see where they had been. There were skid marks everywhere, splintered, broken smoking trees, smashed house windows, the roads pockmarked with more craters and blast holes than the surface of the moon, cats lying on their sides or completely overturned, obviously shaken by some powerful blasts that are coming from the butts. Gross. And everywhere permeating everything the air was warm and thick with the stench of rotten egg gas breathing was almost impossible zach reached down to the belt oh that's right the the uh, butt catcher had given him his tool belt that had all of the things he needed to help catch butts um, so zach reached down to the belt took out one of the clothespins and put it on his nose. It provided instant relief. He was glad that the butt catcher had insisted that he take the belt. As he crossed a large intersection on the outskirts of town, he noticed a droning noise. Zach couldn't identify it, but it was getting louder. It seemed to be coming from overhead. He looked up. The sky was streaked with light. Dawn was not far away. And then he saw them flying butts. A whole squadron heading straight toward him. The noise was deafening and the smell was so intense that Zach almost passed out. He ran down a hill to hide under some trees beside a small creek, but it was too late. They had seen him. As Zach ran, he looked over his shoulder. A butt broke away from the pack and began to zoom toward him. It was not a pretty sight. It was huge, and it was coming in fast. Zach fell to the ground and put his hands over his head just in time. The butt swooped down over the top of him, brushing the back of his hand. Zach lifted his head to see the butt shoot up into the sky, turn and start hurtling toward him even faster this time. Zach gulped 
This was just like the exam he'd failed the last time he tried to outrun the Junior Butt Fighters League. Except worse, the butt that had gassed him there was a slow, moving, and clumsy butt. This butt was bigger and meaner and meant business, real business. Zack became aware of a sharp pain in his side. He was the tennis, it was the tennis racket handle. He pushed himself up onto one of his elbows, reached down, and pulled the racket out of the belt. If he was going to die, he at least wanted to die in comfort. Then Zack noticed a strange thing. As he produced the tennis racket from underneath him, the color drained from the butt, leaving it deathly white. Instinctively, Zack realized that the butt was scared. It was scared of the racket. Zack gripped the handle tightly, and a daring idea formed in his mind. He could hit it. It was worth a try. After all, what did he have to lose? He figured he was about to die anyway. Zack rolled over, sat up, hid the racket behind his back. He waited until the butt was almost on top of him, and then let it fly. Thwack! The butt went hurtling off his racket and into the back of the parked car. Boom! The explosion was deafening and the force of it knocked Zack over onto his back. Zack couldn't believe what he had just done. He stood up to run, but two more butts even larger than the first broke away from the main group and sped toward him. Zack raised his tennis racket ready to hit them as they drew closer, however, one veered around to attack him from behind while the other continued its assault from the front. Zack gulped and gulped again, one gulp for each butt. Those butts were smart, he thought. They knew he could hit only one at a time. But then Zack had another daring idea. He forced his eyes shut. I'm sorry, he focused his eyes on the butt coming toward him. He could hear the evil drone of the other butt coming in from behind him. At the last possible moment, he ducked. The butts collided. (laughs) With a thunderous sonic boom, Zack was thrown face first into the ground. But that wasn't the end of his problems because now the rest of the squadron was heading toward him and they weren't happy. Zack knew his tennis racket would be of no use against that many butts. There must have been at least 50 of them spread out across the sky and heading in at him from every direction. He didn't know a lot about butt fighting, but he knew enough to know what this meant. It was a cluster butt. Zack started running. He had to find cover or he was going to be obliterated. And then Zack saw it, an open storm drain. He ran toward it. He made it to the mouth of the enormous pipe when the butts collided. Wham! He felt the heat on his back and the blast propelled him into the darkness of the drain. Zack rocketed through the pipe and shot out into a large open area with a number of other drains that had emptied there. He crashed into a small card table surrounded by butts. The table collapsed underneath him and the butts went flying, but before Zack could get up, the butts were all around him, poking him with their soft, frog-like fingers. Well, 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 said a well-scrubbed butt who was wearing a cardboard party hat in the shape of a crown. If it isn't a butt catcher, how nice of him to drop in, isn't it, Maurice? Maurice, a larger butt, standing behind him, nodded. Very nice, Prince, he said in a deep voice. Very nice indeed. The rest of the butts elbowed one another and snickered. The butt called Prince jumped up onto Zack's chest. Well, he said, to what do we owe this unexpected pleasure, butt catcher? The smell of the prince's breath almost knocked Zack out, despite the clothespin on his nose. I'm not a butt catcher, said Zack. Do you take me for a fool, said Prince. No, said Zack. Then why do you insult me, said Prince. Insult you, said Zack. What do you mean? 
Well, you're wearing a butt catcher's utility belt, utility belt, said the prince, reaching forward, unclipping the belt and dangling it in front of Zack's face. I assume you're not delivering pizzas. The other butts slapped their thighs and winked at one another in appreciation <laughs> of their leader's joke. <laughs> That's not my belt, said Zack. Look, said the prince. I'd like to believe you. I really would. Wouldn't I, Maurice? That's right, said Maurice. He would. He really would. He really and truly would. Then that will do, Maurice, said Prince. Sorry, sir, said Maurice. As I was saying, said the Prince, I would like to believe you, but it's more than my job's worth, you see. As leader of the but intelligent, it's intelligence it's my job to capture and interrogate any humans engaged in anti-butt activities now put yourself in my shoes a human wearing a butt catcher's utility belt enters the room and tells us that he's not a butt catcher what would you do uh let him go suggested zach no said the prince i hoped you might be a little more clever than that i would interrogate him Find out who he's working for and how many more of them there are. I probably even have to torture him unless he wanted to save some time and tell me the truth straight away. As the prince spoke, the gang of butts closed in even more tightly around Zack. I'm telling you, said Zack, I am not a butt catcher and I don't work for anyone. But the prince ignored him. Maurice, he said. Maurice stepped forward, snapping his feet to attention. Yes, sir. Match, please, said the prince. Yes, sir, said Maurice, producing a box of matches. He opened the box and passed a match to the prince. Know what this is, said the prince, waving it in front of Zack's face. The gang of butts all took a few steps back. Yes, said Zack, beginning to tremble. A match? Good, said the prince. At last, we're getting somewhere. Now. Tell me, who are you working for? Nobody, said Zack. You're making a mistake. I'm not working for anybody. I'm civilian. The prince nodded. For a moment, Zack thought it was because he'd understood. But then the prince gestured to Maurice to come closer. Maurice stepped forward with the matchbox held out in his hand. I was hoping to avoid this, said the prince in a low voice. But unless you answer my questions truthfully... You leave me no choice. I'm telling you the truth, said Zack, feeling the sweat from form on the back of his neck. The prince was clearly psycho, he thought, perhaps even more psycho than his own butt. The prince sighed and struck the match against the box. It flared. The butts all leaned forward as close as they dared, not wanting to miss a single moment of the action. Zack knew what was coming. Butts? and matches were a bad combination. He tried to get away, but Maurice put his foot on his chest. Zack was trapped. The prince took a deep breath, brought the match in front of his mouth, and held out his finger. Maurice, pull my finger, he said. <laughs> Zack closed his eyes. Suddenly, he heard a splash. Stop right there, said a voice. Move away from him and face the wall. That goes for all of you. <sighs> Zack looked up. There, standing at the end of the drain he'd slid through, was a girl wearing army camouflage pants and a green jersey. Her hair was a tangled mess. She looked like she'd been living rough. She was heavily armed, a butt gun on each hip, a knife strapped to one of her black combat boots, and a huge butt blaster hanging off of her shoulder. She was holding on to it with both hands, standing absolutely still, with the air of somebody who expected to be obeyed. She was scowling, looking directly at the prince, who hadn't moved. Well, what are you waiting for, she said, jumping down from the lip of the pipe and landing cat-like on the metal grate without losing either her balance or her poise. The butts all scuttled to the edge of the drain, all except the prince and Maurice. Dear me, said the prince, such rudeness. Have you ever heard of anything like it, Maurice? No, sir, Maurice said gravely. I don't believe I have. You, my dear, said the prince, turning to the girl, need to learn some manners. 
and you need to move to the wall, she said, taking a menacing step toward him, or I will shoot. I will do as you ask, said the prince, but first you must say, please. The only response from the girl was a volley of gunfire. Thumbtacks shot out of her gun and embedded themselves in a straight line along the tabletop, stopping only a few inches from Zack's leg. Maurice screamed. I used thumbtacks that time, said the girl. Next time, it'll be staples. Okay, all right, said the prince. Temper, temper. Zack reached up and snatched the utility belt from the prince's hand. The prince glanced at the girl, looking slightly worried. We weren't going to hurt him, he said, looking back at Zack. Honestly, we were just having a little bit of fun, weren't we, Maurice? Suddenly, the air was full of staples. The girl sprayed the metal gate in front of the prince and Maurice. They shielded themselves as best as they could with their little fog froggy arms, but many of the staples rebounded and struck into them. They responded by jumping around as if they were standing on a hot plate. Hey, said the prince, that hurts. Just shut up and move, said the girl. I won't tell you again. Next time, it will be nails, rusty ones. Something about the tone of her voice combined with the threat of the rusty nails was serious enough to get through to Maurice and the prince. They ran to join the other butts at the far side of the drain. The girl walked towards Zack staring angrily into his eyes. Zack was sweating. She was almost more frightening than the butts. Are you hurt? said the girl. No, said Zack. You came just in time. I heard the cluster butt, she said. I figured they must have been after somebody. What were you doing out after a butt siren had been sounded anyway? Butt siren, said Zack. I didn't hear a butt siren. You must be duff, deaf as well as dumb, she said. What? Zack was beginning to think the prince was right. This girl was rude. Anyone who walks around the streets in the middle of the butt curfew, unarmed, is asking for trouble, she said. And then I have to waste my time saving them. I wasn't unarmed, said Zack, showing her the utility belt. I was wearing this. That's a cute little toy, said the girl, smiling. Did you get it for Christmas? No, said Zack. A butt catcher gave it to me. The girl sighed. Stupid street cleaner, she said. They should leave it to the professionals. He is a professional, said Zack. If God meant us to catch butt, she said, patting her butt blaster, she wouldn't have given us these to kill them with. So you're a butt fighter, she said. What's your name, said Zack. Eleanor. I'm Zack, he said, holding out his hand. She ignored it. Let's get out of here, she said. It stinks. She waved her gun toward the pipe she jumped down from. Can you get up there? I think so, said Zack. Let's go then, she said. She turned, ran toward the wall, and in one graceful move, jumped up and landed back up on the edge of the drain. Zack went as far back as he could and began to run. He jumped, reached up for the lip of the drain, and missed. He put his hands on the ledge and tried to pull himself up. He got his head and shoulders on, into the pipe, but it was hard to get a good grip on the slippery concrete. Eleanor knelt down and grabbed Zack's pajama top. With one mighty heave, she swung him up over the drain lip and up onto the pipe. She did it with such force that Zack was sliding along the pipe through the darkness and shot out the other end that where he had originally come in. Eleanor was right behind him. Come on, she said, as they emerged, blinking into the light. My buttmobile is hidden in a park not far from here. You've got a buttmobile, said Zack. What kind? A 370TZ? With retractable wings, he said. Of course, she said. Handles all terrain, even goes underwater. Wow, said Zack. He looked at the girl. She couldn't have been much older than him, and yet she already had her own butt mobile. Here, she said. You better take this. Zack looked at the gun and felt his pulse quickening. It was a 4502LL. The LL stood for 
laxative launcher, state-of-the-art. It could fire up to five capsules of pure laxative per second. Are you sure, he said. Of course I'm sure, she said. What's the matter? Are you scared? No, said Zach quickly. Up until now, he had only read about guns like this. He had never dreamed he'd ever actually get to hold one. He held the gun up to his eye, put his finger on the trigger, and took aim through the telescope viewfinder. Suddenly, the gun jolted backward in his hand, and a volley of capsules poured out onto his neck. You idiot, said Eleanor. Are you trying to get us killed? I, I'm sorry, he said. It was an accident. You'll have to be more careful than that. If you want to... Oops. Oh, sorry, I got a pitch up there. If you're going to have to be more careful than that if you want to stay alive, she said. Let's go and keep your head down. I can't see any butts, but that doesn't mean they're not around. Zack nodded, his face burning with embarrassment. He knew he was no butt fighter, but it was too late to back out now. Crouching low, Zack followed the girl through the long grass by the side of the creek. Soon they reached the edge of the park. Eleanor pointed to a weeping willow on the other side. Its thick branches drooped all the way down to the ground. That's where the buttmobile is hidden, she said. Let's go. Zack nodded. They were about halfway across the park when they heard a weird high-pitched squealing noise above them. What's that? said Zack. Get down, said Eleanor, pushing him roughly to the ground. A butt whizzed over their heads and splattered onto the ground a few yards in front of them. Kamikaze butts said Eleanor, pointing to a large dead tree behind them, its branches lined with hundreds of butts, each wearing a red band. We're going to have to make a run for it. She sprinted off across the park toward the buttmobile. Zack ran after her. The butts whizzed and whined overhead, exploding all around them. Finally, they made it to the willow tree. Eleanor parted the curtain of branches to reveal the buttmobile. Zack's eyes bulged. The 370TZ was an amazing machine. It resembled, it resembled an armored tank, except it was as if the top half had been removed and replaced with two large plastic domes. Also, unlike a tank, it had a very long yellow nose out the front of it, tapering to a very sharp point with BH007 written along the side in red. But the thing that really caught Zack's eye were the three rocket thrusters mounted at the rear. This would make the buttmobile capable of flying at least twice the speed of wind, easily enough to hunt down or, if necessary, escape from the biggest and meanest of butts. Zack was so amazed at the sight of the buttmobile that he forgot about the butt gun in his hand. Suddenly, another volley of capsules sprayed out of the neck and into the trunk of the tree. For a moment, nothing happened, and then Zack saw the most incredible thing he had ever seen. Every single leaf fell off the tree, leaving just a skeleton of branches and the buttmobile completely exposed. Zack blinked and shook his head. They were powerful laxatives, that was for sure. You idiot, yelled Eleanor. Now look what you've done. It was an accident said Zack, but he was drowned out by the sound of the butt slamming into the side of the buttmobile and exploding. Cover me, said Eleanor. Leaping onto the top of the buttmobile, she knelt down, grabbed hold of the entry hatch, and pulled it open, but the butt was heading straight for her. Zack heard it, spun around, took aim, and fired. It was a direct hit. The butt released a volcanic geyser of brown liquid and then blew apart completely, covering both Zack and Eleanor with something very similar in consistency to chocolate mousse, except much, much stinkier. Uh, I did it, Zack said to Eleanor, jumping up and down. I did it. That's great, said Eleanor, lowering herself down into the hatch, but what are you going to do about that? She pointed behind Zack and then disappeared into the buttmobile. Zack looked around. What he saw made his stomach drop. An enormous boulder was rolling down the hill toward them, only this was no ordinary boulder. It was a butt boulder. Hundreds of butts clustered together, hurtling across the grass, 
crushing saplings like matchsticks. Zack stared at it. The butt boulder was less than 50 yards away. Well, don't just stand there, you idiot, yelled Eleanor, poking her head back through the hatch. Jump in. Zack took one last look at the boulder, turned, and with an almost superhuman effort, jumped straight into the buttmobile, pulling the hatch shut behind him. Eleanor was in the front dome of the buttmobile, strapping herself into one of the pilot seats. Hold on, she yelled, firing butt thrusters. But before Zack had a chance to grab hold of anything, the buttmobile roared into life. Suddenly, he was staggering backward as they shot up into the sky. Zack hit the back wall of the buttmobile and fell sideways, his face pressed against the plastic dome. He saw the butt boulder smash into the willow tree and burst apart, sending the butts flying into the air. They quickly regrouped and began chasing the buttmobile. They're after us, Zack yelled. The buttmobile suddenly dived. That time, Zack went flying forward and fell heavily onto the controls of the front dome, landing with his face pressed ag hard against the windshield. You idiot, screamed Eleanor. Why aren't you strapped in? I didn't have time, he said. But Eleanor wasn't listening. She was too busy concentrating on the huge mass of butts speeding toward them. There must have been at least 500 of them. A big, angry, wasp-like cloud of butts. Oh, no, she said. Hold on, we're going to have to corkscrew. What does that mean, said Zack. Eleanor pulled down hard on her steering wheel. The buttmobile started looping in a series of smaller and smaller circles. Zack had been feeling sick already, but this was the last straw. He threw up in the corkscrew pattern all over the controls and windshield and the floor. Eleanor was frantically trying to wipe a clean space on the windshield to see through when Zack slipped and fell on top of her. Eleanor's head hit the left side of the buttmobile with a thump, and she slumped in her chair, completely knocked out. With nobody at the controls, the buttmobile flipped upside down, and Zack fell backward and landed against the hatch with such force that it sprang open. As Zack fell, he grabbed the edge of the hatch and held on for life. Zack's heart was pounding as he took stock of his predicament. He was hanging from an upside-down, out-of-control butt mobile with a posse of angry butts hot on his tail. Within moments, there they were at his feet, and at the head of the pack were two butts that he recognized only too well. Greetings, my dear boy, said the first butt. What a great pleasure to see you again. Don't you agree, Maurice? Oh, yes, your highness, said Maurice, smiling down. It is indeed a great, great pleasure. Okay, and so that's where I'm going to stop today. Uh, lots of craziness going on, right? So who's back there with them but the prince and Maurice, the ones that they had just escaped from, and now they're caught up to them again. So uh, very crazy, crazy story. Zach keeps messing up everything that Eleanor's trying to do and accidentally shooting out the laxatives and throwing up all inside the butt mobile. Oh, goodness, poor Zach, but poor Eleanor for having to deal with all of that, too. So gross and funny uh, and gross. <laughs> so I hope you can join me again tomorrow when I continue to read. We'll be reading Chapter 3 called The B Team. So join me again tomorrow for the day my butt went psycho. I hope to see you here. Bye. Talk to you later.